but just being from New York, I could tell you this. The coverage the Nets get versus the Knicks, it's it's night and day. It's night and day. Oh, like, and a perfect example of it is Mikael Bridges. We never heard about Mikael Bridges' shot formation when he was on the Nets. But as soon as he crossed the water and went to play for the Knicks, all of a sudden, every little thing he does is getting examined. This whole thing yeah. pieces. That's the fucking difference. And it's like that in L.A. And I think J.J. for the first time, other than the Donald Sterling situation, which was a sneak peek of that type of coverage, he's seeing the real L.A. kind of media vibe. And it doesn't really sit well with him. But they're not going to make him the escape goat for this whole uh, Lakers situation because the way they treated Darvin Ham with the same roster, same results, same roster, was yes. completely different. They try to make Darvin Ham the scapegoat. Like, oh, it's his yeah. fault. And the media coverage around them too is completely fucking different. Completely different. Yeah. But uh, check out J.R. Smith because he actually spoke on the different coverages between the two and how Darvin Ham was kind of used as a scapegoat. Let's check it out real quick. Darvin Ham was a scapegoat, dog. Oh. Like, what are you supposed to do with that roster? Like, Cam Reddish coming off the bench, like, I feel like he can be better for sure. I feel like his, his game is the type, like, you can definitely have an opportunity to run a second unit, but you got to develop some more pick and rolls and, and, like, and mature your game a little bit. But, like, yeah. they, they, other than that, they bench, they're, no, they're non-existent. Bro, the bench, Bron, the you bench got, is, the you bench got is terrible. Bron trying to be 2005, 2006, Bron, he's still going out there putting up crazy-ass numbers. And then, you know, AD play when he played, but that ain't enough to win. Like, to be in the Lakers situation, like, bro, you got to understand, Laker culture is win or not. They're like, win or die. Yeah, it's, it's championship so, or bust right now. Yeah, so you, like, exit first rounds, barely making the first round. Like, that shit look bad. So you hear it straight from J.R. Smith. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you supposed right. to do that? And Darvin Ham was a scapegoat. Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. I think Rob Palenka should be held more accountable. Um, you know, will he? Probably. I think. I think this season he probably will be held more accountable because I think the Lakers since that twenty twenty run has been trash. And I think Rob Palenka has what had four coaches under him get fired. If I'm not wrong, he had Frank. He had Luke Walton was kind of like Mitch Kupchak's hire, but he got him fired. So I don't know if you want to count him. You got Frank Vogel, you have Darvin Ham, and now you have J.J. Red under him. So at some point, you have to question, like, yo, what the fuck are we doing? Along with that is you look at his failed, um, you look at a lot of his failed signings and trades, you know, like Russell Westbrook was a failure in L.A., Dennis Schroeder, um, who else can I bring? Yeah, all the, all the free agents they yeah. missed out on. Clay Thompson, yeah. Kawhi. Clay Thompson, Paul Kawhi. George. Jimmy Butler. So there's a lot of Sheesh. names you could bring out there. It's like shit. Yeah, they didn't pull the trigger on certain yeah. trades. It's, yeah, it's a lot of uh it's a um Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso was a loss. I think losing KCP only for him to win a championship like what two years later? Mm -hmm. Losing Cal Kuzma, who's still like who's still a great player, who's still nah, someone that, who's that, a role player. I, I'll give it up to them. It was worth it to get A D. No, Kyle Kuzma was not the Anthony Davis trade. Oh, it wasn't. Well, how did Brent, that's Brandon Ingram? Kyle Kuzma's a part of the Russell Westbrook trade. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Yes, Kuzma was a part of the championship, bro. I forgot about that. Wow, this team, yeah, they, yeah. wow, they even utilized him correctly. No, and he's he's a guy right now performing on a on an empty team. I think he's putting up what. Uh, I mean, regardless, he's performing on an empty team. He's decent. He's serviceable, but they could have flipped him for something better. 100% they could have. But think about it. But after all these yeah. mistakes, right? The coaching mistakes, firing, hiring, firing, hiring, all the yes. plays they let go, all the plays they traded for the wrong people that don't fit, etc. They went after just fucking Bronny. After they knew they yeah. needed a guard. This is why I'm saying the Lakers are not serious. They went from no. a franchise... That's about championships with like Yankee expectations from season to season to just we're using LeBron and everything is about LeBron and entertainment and come see LeBron and Bronny. That's the franchise that they are on right now. And they acted like last season they wasn't about that. 
blaming Darvin Ham, making him yeah. the fall guy. But now JJ Reddick is having the same outcomes, and the energy is different. It's like, oh, JJ's our guy. Like what? Mm -hmm. Like none of this shit makes fucking sense. You're a band aid. You're a band aid. The thing that's holding it together is an injury prone Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. and not a good look. Yep. And yeah. AD low key, he's been looking like an MVP. Oh, 100%. He did. He did. He does. Bro, he's a top. When healthy, he's, he can crack the top 10. But he's never really healthy like that, you know? Yep. Yeah. So at one point, at some point, the Lakers, you know, the Lakers didn't. I feel like we talk about this all the time. This is a frustrating team, man. Like, they're not a serious team, regardless of who coaches, who plays, whatever. Like, yeah, they're not a serious team. They never bring a proper team around these two. Like, who can you say is a knockdown shooter for the Lakers? Wow. In a, in a jump shooting era with the, with the floor so spaced out like that. Oh, 100%. It's kind of crazy. Lakers fans can you deserve say? better. They deserve better than that. Yeah. They do. 100% they do. There's there's an expectation of being a Laker, and I feel like, no offense to LeBron, ever since he's been there, a lot of those expectations have been put on the back burner. No doubt. Right, even Cleveland ran even Cleveland ran a better shift, especially their second run with LeBron than fucking uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I think L.A. L.A. probably has the best talent, the second best talent next to LeBron. Yep. Since like the, what, 2012, 2011 D-Wade. But there, there's a reckoning that's going to happen for um for Laker fans and Jeannie Buss. At some point, they're going to have to start holding her accountable because there's been a lot of fucking mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Yeah. And it's... it's I, I wouldn't be shocked that eventually she sells that team. Because I, I honestly, I don't think they know what they're doing. Yeah, bro, honestly... With the money coming into the NBA, I wouldn't be surprised either. Because I think Genie Bus has been not a failure, but I don't know, dude. It seems like yes. It seems like she wants to run it where like she wants to keep the image of the old into the new, you know? Like a lot of the people in the Lakers circle are people from generations ago, like Kerr mm -hmm. Rambis, his wife, Rob Palenka. These guys, like, come on. That's a long time ago. You're talking about people from Magic era, Kobe's era. Yep, and at the same time, the the most successful person of that era, which he probably held them accountable to certain standards, was Jerry West. And you see, they had yeah. a fallout with him. Jerry West, yeah, of course, bro. Even Jerry West, he wasn't a part of their two championship runs. Um, in in two thousand nine, two thousand ten, it was uh, Mitch Kupchak. But even then, he's a lot older now. Obviously, you need. Oh no, yeah, he passed. Need, he passed away yeah. recently. Mitch Kupchak, he's still alive. No, no, Jerry West. Yeah, Jerry West. So you have a lot of these guys, a lot of these personalities are gone. But still, you know, a team, you expect them to adjust. The Lakers just kind of failed to adjust to the new era. Like, you bring in Magic, he failed. You bring in Rob Palenka, Karambas. Phil Jackson, I think, still had an advising role for a little bit. Why? Like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. Like, let them be great in their eras. But, dude, I, like, if I asked, like, De'Aaron Fox, Anthony Davis, not Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, they didn't grow up watching Phil Jackson. Why the hell would they care that Phil Jackson endorses a franchise? 